won a Super Bowl with Troy Polamalu. He drafted Troy Polamalu into the league from USC to Pittsburgh. He's a colleague of mine on Thursday Night Football on CBS. He is Super Bowl winning head coach Bill Cower here on the Rich Eisen Show. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great, Rich. So if somebody just comes up to you and doesn't know about Troy Polamalu and asks you, what was Troy Polamalu like when you uh, had him and how would you answer that question, Troy Polamalu, Bill? Troy Polamalu, you know what, Rich, I think the best way of saying it is if you watched him play on the field, he was complete uh, opposite of that off the field. He was very quiet, very humble. But you watch him play on the field. The guy had great passion. He uh, was one of the best preparers I've ever been around. He studied the game, stood in the game, and uh, and just played very loud with a very soft voice. So when you drafted him 16th overall in 2003, what did you see in Troy Polamalu from USC that you knew oh, we, we got to get this this kid and put him right in the middle of uh, Dick LeBeau's defense? Well, you know, we, we actually traded up to get him, and uh, he had an unbelievable workout. And it was right around that time, Rich, in 2003, the tight end became a very prominent, it was becoming a very prominent part of the offenses in the National Football League. And so it, it was nice to be able to find that strong safety who also had coverability. And I think that was the biggest thing. And, you know, we had that in Carnell Lake. And then we went through a period of time where we didn't have it. And, um, you know, so when he came in, what we saw was a player that could play near the line of scrimmage, but could also play in the slot. And really his first year, we threw everything at him. He played nickel, he played dime, he played strong safety. And, you know, I think that he suffered a little bit in that first year in 2003 because, you know, we were so, uh, I guess, entrenched in the fact that he could do so many different things. And we threw a lot at him, but, you know, as you, as you get around him, he just had a great feel for the game, a great passion for the game. And like I said before, sometimes we cut back to let him kind of do his thing because he had just great instincts. Well, he, 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 I mentioned it at the top of the show, Coach, that he came in to the league. His first year was the first year for NFL Network. And, and, and in the 12-plus years that I've been around with NFL Network and around analysts who've watched him play, he's number one in terms of him making a play and one of the analysts who we work with on Thursday night, whether it's Marshall or Irvin, turns to me and they laugh, saying he had no business being there no. making that play. And no. he was he's just a freelancer and he's always at the spot where he needs to be, even though that's what wasn't called. When did you realize he had that ability? Well, I mean, I think the more you were around him, and, and, and I always, and the reason why we didn't really curtail it, because he, you go in the office in the morning, and he's already been in there for an hour. He had Rod Woodson type of abilities. I mean, I remember two people I always remember walking into the building in the morning at 7 or 7.30, and they were already in the film room by themselves taking notes. That was Rod Woodson and Troy Palomalu. These guys studied the game. And then when you take players like that, and then you put an ability with them, you know, you, you don't want to curtail that. And, and if he did something, he had a reason. I will tell you a story. He was playing against Carson Palmer. He was a roommate of his in college at USC. Mm -hmm. And we had called cover two, which is a two-deep safety. He moved up to the line of scrimmage, which he was known to do, which was to disguise. He moved up to the line of scrimmage, and we're thinking, okay, Troy's going to, at some point, get out of there. He didn't get out of there. Dick and I are on the sideline going, get back, get back. He's waving us off saying, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and he, the ball was snapped. Carson thought it was a 3 deep defense, throws a ball in the flat. Troy goes out there and makes the play in the flat, comes off the field, and all of a sudden we go, Troy, that was covered too. He goes, I know. I told Ike, the corner, you play half the field. I'll take the flat, but we'll be an eight-man in the box because that way we can confuse the quarterback. I said, that's great. Will you tell us the next time you do that, though? Because we're on the side. I said, you need to tell us before you start doing these things. So, you know, he had, he had a great – feel for the game, understood the game, and you didn't want to curtail that. And while it made it challenging for the players around him, he made a lot more plays than mistakes. Yeah, and, and then the physical ability, because so many yeah. people will re re remember some play. If, if you ask somebody, like, what's the play you remember of Troy Polamalu, they will recall the, the number of times that he knew the snap count or figured out the snap count and literally jumped over the person making the snap as the snap is made on the line of scrimmage. Just remarkable feats of athletic ability, Coach. 
he was he had a tremendous burst, Rich. I mean, he 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 did, he actually did that. He could anticipate better than anybody. And I think the one thing, like, and you talk about Marshall and and uh, Michael saying things like they just laugh because you're right. He would study he would study a team to the point where he knew where the ball was going. Now, if he wasn't if his responsibility wasn't there, he he said, if I know where the ball is going, why should I just go there? So he took chances. Now, it got burned at times. I know, remember one time Tom Brady, they, they motioned and got him to the middle of the field because we were uh, we were inverting the safeties. And and uh, Tom Brady, he, he pumped fake to dig, and right behind him was a post for it and uh, went right over Troy's head. So, you know, you know his you know his ability and at times his, his risk in taking chances kind of got him in trouble. But like I said before, the one thing I will say about him, if you want to talk about Hall of Fame or not, the one thing, if you ask any opponent that was playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers during the time that he was there, is any quarterback, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, all the great ones, find 43. And so he had an impact in the game. You had to know where he was at all times, a little bit like Ed Reed was when Ed Reed was playing in his prime with Baltimore. So these players, when they were on the field, they had a tremendous impact in the game, and they really made a lot of the players around them better. And, of course, it was easy to find them with that hair. Coach, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, he, he did have a distinct ability. Yeah, you know, and uh, but before I let you go, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about him as the person, the human being, the humanitarian, the uh, the the husband, the religious figure that he is, uh, and and if you can just have the floor, the best story you could tell about who he is as an individual, not a football player. You know, we interviewed him in Indianapolis in the, at the Combine um, when he was coming out. And he walked out of the door, and I just remember looking at Kevin. I'm going, that's the guy we just saw on tape? Like, he is the most soft-spoken. You have to get close to him to hear him. He doesn't say many words. Um, very religious. Um, and a really good family guy. You know, and, and I'll say it before. He's got great respect for the game. Um, he embraced the Steeler tradition when he came there. Um, you know, if I could say anything, I would just say is, you know, to any players coming into the National Football League, if you watch the way he prepared, you watch the way he played, and watch the way he handled himself as a professional, that is a lesson that they should take and they should use as a blueprint for how you play in the National Football League and how you lead yourself and the, the people that he's inspired to touch it along the way. And he's a, first, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, correct, Coach? No doubt about it. Because like I said to me, you talk about Bruce Smith, you talk about um, uh, White, Reggie White, you talk about Ed Reed. I mean, these are guys that impacted the game. You game planned around them. And so, you know, when people have that kind of impact in the game, to me, they're first ballot guys. Coach, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Miss hanging with you. I look forward to more time. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the fall, Rich. You bet. That's Bill Cowher, CBS Sports. Super Bowl champion head coach. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.